stay at heart and today we're getting ready to can up some buffalo wings y'all want to get these babies in a jar and on the shelf oh you don't want to miss this <laughs> y'all stay tuned all right you all let's go ahead and get into this as you could see in my skillet, I already have my half a cup of butter. This butter has already been sitting in this skillet with a medium low heat and melting away. And as you can see, it's melted and looking pretty good. So now let's go ahead and add in the rest of our ingredients. I'm gonna keep the fire on, but I'm gonna add in the rest of our ingredients, okay? So the first thing we're gonna need, of course, is Louisiana hot sauce. Now, let me be clear. When I say Louisiana hot sauce, I ain't talking about any hot sauce. I mean Louisiana red dot hot sauce. Okay? All right, y'all. Let's not play about it. Louisiana red dot hot sauce. I'm going to go ahead and add in my one and a half cups of Louisiana hot sauce. Okay? Y'all know I like to get everything out. I like to get it all out. Okay? Add in my hot sauce. Just gonna give that a stir, just a little bit of a stir, okay? And remember y'all, I got this on a low heat. We're gonna leave it there, all right? Now the next thing is gonna be to add in my two tablespoons of white distilled vinegar. I'm also gonna add in, put that bottle out of the way. I'm also gonna add in my one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Okay, I'm going to add in now my one teaspoon of granulated garlic. You can use any kind of garlic you like, but this is what I have on hand, so this is what I'm using. And I'm just going to get that garlic sprinkled over the top there. Give that a quick little stir around. All right, next I'm going to add in my salt. I have one-fourth of a teaspoon of salt. This is pink Himalayan salt. You can use a kosher salt if you like, but I'm putting in my salt. Next, I'm gonna add in some cayenne pepper. That's one fourth of a teaspoon. If you want more, you can add more of cayenne pepper. Next, I have my parsley. This is one teaspoon of parsley, dried parsley. Okay, I'm gonna give that a stir. I just like to give it a stir every now and then. Make sure I'm adding some love as I go. <laughs> adding some love as I go. All right, you all, last but not least, I'm adding in some smoked paprika. This is one teaspoon of smoked paprika. All right, gonna give that a stir. This smells so good all, oh my goodness, this smells so good already. To me, smoked paprika just makes everything taste so much better. And now this amazing sauce, I'm gonna bring that to a simmer. I'm gonna turn up my heat a bit to a medium heat. And once this sauce starts to bubble just a little bit, this sauce is gonna be ready. Let's get that brought up to a simmer. All right, you all, now that this sauce is bubbling just like so, I'm gonna turn off the fire. Because remember, this is sauce that we are making for canning. This is a little different from regular buffalo wing sauce, right? We're going to be using this for canning. And you can use this wing sauce to can chicken wings or just chicken legs and thighs, right? You can even use it for canning uh, turkey wings as well if you would like to do that. This sauce is absolutely amazing. All right? So now that I've turned the fire off of this sauce, remember this is buffalo wing sauce specifically for canning, okay? Now that I've turned the fire off, give that a quick little mix. Now I'm gonna sit that to the side. I'm gonna grab me a little wire whisk here. And I could use this one. Grab me a wire whisk because now I'm gonna need to add in my one tablespoon of clear gel. You want the fire off. You do want this to be hot, but you want the fire off, okay? And this is just one tablespoon. You don't need a lot of clear gel for this, all right, you all? You just need a little bit. 
So this is one tablespoon that I'm gonna add to this. I'm gonna sprinkle that in. And then I'm gonna whisk. And you wanna whisk, 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 whisk. Can y'all see how thick that has gotten already? I'm gonna keep whisking for just another few seconds. This sauce is ready. All right, you all, look at how thick this sauce is now. Can you see that? Just look at the thickness of this sauce. Look at that. That's some very thick sauce right there. See that? Okay. So now that this sauce is done, I'm going to allow this sauce to sit on the stove and just cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then we will be ready to move on to next steps. Okay, you all. So now my sauce is cooled down so now i am actually ready to get the show on the road now the first thing i want to let you know is that my wings have already been prepared and what i mean by prepared is that they have been washed very well and i even let them soak in some cool water and some vinegar for about 15 minutes or so just to make sure they are very clean okay and so these chicken wings have been prepared now my sauce is also done and it has cooled down quite a bit. As you can see, pan is not hot. It's been about 15 minutes on this. And the wings, let me show you this. I saved this just to show you because I don't do the entire wing, okay? These are just regular size wings here, okay? But as you can see, I'm taking off the tips. I don't need these, all right? I'm taking off the wing tips. And then I'm cutting my wing pieces just enough so that I can have the two pieces. These are just regular size chicken wings, okay? They're not drumettes or anything like that. So I'm trying to cut this so you can see it. Just take off the tips and then I'm cutting the wing. See that? Just using some regular shears in the kitchen and I'm taking off the wing. All right, so let me show you. So now I have two pieces here, okay? One, two, two pieces, okay? All right, you all, so I had to go ahead and wash my hands because I'm about to handle my spices. So what I'm gonna do now is just take some plain salt, just some pink salt, or if you have some kosher salt, you can use some kosher salt, and I'm just lightly seasoning my wings, okay? And then next, and I'm gonna use a spoon to stir this up. I'm gonna sprinkle over some smoked paprika, and if you don't have smoked paprika, you can use regular paprika, okay? And then of course, I told y'all, Tony Satchels, I put this stuff on everything. All right, let's sprinkle over some Tony Satras. Not a lot. All right, now I'm gonna take a spoon and just give these a toss. Hmm. This ain't working. I'm gonna have to get in there with my hands. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in here with my hands. Gotta get in here and rub this, these wings down. Give them a nice, coating now you all this is about six pounds of wings this recipe is good for five to six pounds of wings all right now i am doubling even tripling this recipe so that i can get a canner full of wings so this one recipe is good for about five to six pounds of wings all right Look at there. See, that's what you want. 
See, you're gonna have the sauce on, but these babies need to be seasoned, okay? All right. So now my wings are seasoned. Give my hands a wash. All right, y'all, so the next thing you're gonna need is a container to put your wings in. You can use a storage container if you want, but I prefer a uh, either a storage bag or a freezer bag, whichever one you have, but you're gonna need a one gallon size, all right? Now, I'm just gonna take my wings, and I'm just gonna put my wings in. Just drop them in the bag, just like so. And again, you're gonna need five to six pounds, okay? Now I've got half of my wings in there, and what I'm gonna do, let me stir this sauce up again. I'm gonna take where is my measuring cup? What I'm gonna do is take some of this sauce and just pour it over the wings, about half of it, and pause. Okay. Take the rest of my wings, drop them in over the top. I think I got a little better than six pounds, I believe. And I do, but that's fine. Okay, now I'm going to add over the rest of the sauce over the top. Make sure, get air, make sure you get everything out of the pan. This sauce is very thick. So you're going to need every bit of this sauce for five to six pounds of wings, okay? And now I'm going to seal up my bag. Yeah, I, I got way more than six pounds. I think I got like six and a half. <laughs> all right. So now all I'm going to do is just massage the bag with the wings in it, okay? I'm going to make sure I massage it well because I want the sauce to get all over these wings, okay? I want the sauce all through these wings. So I'm just massaging away. Y'all know what to do. Just massage them away. And as you can see, putting them in a gallon size bag like this, this is the perfect amount of wings for this one bag. Between five and six pounds is a perfect amount. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in my refrigerator and I'm gonna lay it flat on my refrigerator shelf, just like so. And what I'll do is I will uh, leave this here in the refrigerator overnight or 24 hours if you want so that these wings could marinate. You can even leave them in there for two days. I've done that before too, all right? So these are gonna go in the refrigerator right here and these I will can tomorrow. Now, just so you know, I already got these bags ready to go. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. Wait a minute. Mm. <laughs> so these have been in the refrigerator since yesterday morning. So these are already ready to go. And now all we got to do is get them in the can. Let's do it. All right. Now we are ready for the next step. Okay. So before we get too far ahead, I'm going to let you know, you're going to need your pressure canner. And you're gonna to need to have water in your canner. My canner calls for three inches of water, and I already have that water. It's cold water in my canner, okay? Because my product here is cold, just came out of the refrigerator, all right? My wide mouth quart size jars are cold. So are my um, band, well, my lids have already been kind of sitting in some warm water. I always do that no matter what but they've been sitting in warm water, so these are ready to go. I also have my little debubbler here. You're gonna need that. And also I have some distilled white vinegar, and I'll be using that to clean the rims of my jars and um, also a bowl, because I'm about to dump these wings in. That's just gonna make it easier for me to handle them, okay? So I'm gonna open up my bag here gonna dump these out
And now I'm ready to get my wings in the jars. You're gonna be using your hands. Feel free to put on some rubber gloves if, if that makes you more comfortable, okay? But there's nothing else that I have to do to these wings except get them down in the jar. And you are gonna want to finagle the wings in the jar so that they all fit very well. Now, typically I get between 10 and 12 wings in a jar, depending on the size, right? Between 10 and 12, depending on the size. And all I have to do is just put them in, in different ways. Some of them are upside down. Okay. I'm gonna push that one on down in there. All right, now if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's 10 wings. We're not adding any liquid to this jar. Trust me, you don't need to. You got legs in here with bones and wings with bones. A broth will form, okay? So don't add any liquid. Please don't, <laughs> okay? All right, so that's jar number one. Push that over to the side. All right, so that's like five, that's six wings on the bottom there. Now let's start here. Turn that one the other way. Okay. And four on the top. Yeah, it's about 10 wings each time. Because sometimes the wing pieces are large and sometimes they're really small. If they're really small, you can do this. And if you notice, these are just regular size wings. These are not the little drumettes. If you want to do the little drumettes, feel free. But these are just plain wings. You saw I had to cut the tips off because we don't can the tips, okay? Take them and give them to your dogs. They'll love them. And remember I talked to you all when I told you all this is what I love using my Nine and a half jars for is canning meats, right? But when it comes to canning buffalo wings, because you want to get a lot in a jar, the wide mouth quarts are absolutely best for this, okay? Okay, so that only gave me eight wings in that quart. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up my next bag here. Come on, there we go. Gonna dump those in. I forgot how many wings I put in here, but it don't matter. I just keep putting them in there until I can get them all in there. Now, another thing if, if you wanted to do, if you wanted to, what you could do is you could always just count out your wing pieces. If you know you're gonna put 10 in a jar, and however many quarts you want it to do, or pints even, then you can count out the amount that you need for your quarts or your pints, and you can do it that way, okay? How y'all doing? Mr. H is making another appearance. <laughs> <laughs> How the Super Subs doing? Thanks. She'll miss y'all. It's, it's, it's the first of the year. It is. And, and as usual, Mrs. H is in here. She's doing her canning. Yep. Getting everything lined uh, up. Tell them how much you love these wings, Dave. Oh, I love these wings. <laughs> these are these are my favorites. They are so good, y'all. Yeah, so you know, we um uh, we've been <clears throat> eating these wings all year. Yes. Yeah. For two years. For two years, yeah. Yeah, two years. Yeah, yeah, and they real good and flavorful, you know, like when whenever I come in and and, yeah. and, and <clears throat> things are moving kind of fast. We don't have yeah. enough time, so we just open up one of open these up right a here. Open of these buffalo wings. And it be on and popping after that. Yes, it do. Yep, this is going to do it. Cajun so, buffalo wings. These are our buffalo wings. Cajun buffalo wings, y'all. Homestead hard buffalo wings. Homestead hard <laughs> buffalo wings. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to take the rest of this sauce here. And go ahead and spread it around. I'm going to spread the love. She finna spread the love, y'all. I'm going to spread the love. Yes, yes, y'all. <laughs> Spreading this the love pretty so good. good. Yes. This is going to... Oops. I was trying to put it in there. Okay. Now I got to wash my hands. 
when we press for a lot of time, she just open these up and then have some sides. And then we be good to go. Just imagine, like, whenever things really, you know, being, being a, uh, I guess you can say hard times. Mm -hmm. Right, babe? Right. Hard times. How many people really think about canning, you know, stuff that you really love? Yes. You know, not just like beans, rice, uh, you know, staple goods and things yeah. like that, but, you know, like buffalo wings. Stuff you love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, think about it. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of people love oxtail. Mm hmm You know? I know people love oxtail. So just imagine canning oxtail. Right, right. You go with that rice. And, and it can mean. be done. <laughs> it can be done? Yes, sir. Well, you you ain't you saying say? nothing but a thing. Wow, she go. You ain't saying nothing but a word. Say less. So oxtail with Jamaican jerk sauce? Say less. I got you. Yes, <laughs> yes, mine. Yes, mine. <laughs> Mrs. H is canning. I'm in the buffalo, kitchen. Buffalo wings. All right, y'all. Now I'm going to use my debubbler. And what I'm going to do is just make sure I go down the sides of my jars because... What that do is it allows for me to make sure that any air that's kind of sitting to the side of these wings, I could try to move them around a little bit, right? So I'm doing that. And that's also going to help for the wings to kind of settle better in the jar. See so? Like so? So that helps for them to settle a bit better as well. When I go around the sides, I don't worry about going around the center of the jar, okay? Just the sides, okay? And I do that with all of my jars. Okay, so now this is where the vinegar comes into play. I have me a nice little bit of vinegar here. And I have me some paper napkins that I'm going to be using to clean the rims of my jars, okay? Put my paper towel down in there and just squeeze off the excess. Open this up. So I'm gonna need to use this. And I'm gonna go around the rims of my jars, cleaning them up real good, because they are a mess, right? Because I was just putting wings in there, so it's gonna have something on the rims. So you wanna make sure that you clean these rims off really, really good, okay? All right, you all, so now I'm getting ready to put my lids on. Y'all, having stuff on the counter while I work just irks me. I don't know why, but just like I'm sitting here working, but I don't know. Is it just me? Because I can't stand it, right? It just irks me so bad. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and get my lids on. Jars are nice and clean. And I did have a magnet on that um, debubbler over there, but it is very messy because I used it to... to uh, push the wings down the sides of the jar. And so it was very messy. So I didn't want to use that. I just grabbed me another magnet here. And I know today, if you buy the little canning kits with your um, funnel and your jar lifter, it probably won't come with a magnet nowadays, right? So you truly have to, you truly have to just order your magnets separately. Because these things nowadays, you know, ball kind of cheaped out on us <laughs> and took the magnet out, right? That's a shame. But in any case, you have to order your magnets separately now, you all. Okay, now I'm going to get my bands on, fingertip tight. That just simply means I'm putting the band on and then, squish, that's it. It's not no, no crank down, it's just a... Once it, once the uh, band becomes resistant to turn anymore, then you just squeech just a little bit more. That's it. That's it. Because you want the lid to be loose enough so that air can escape the jar during that pressure canning process. Okay? So do not crank down on that jar because you will prevent that from happening. I have eight quarts here of wings. Boom. All right, y'all, my jars are ready to go in the canner, okay? Now, I have more jars here on the counter because what I decided to do, because I wanted to have a canner that was full, okay? So what I did was I took the unseasoned wings and I put them in the bag with the hot sauce and just kind of rubbed it all around. 
it's in no way going to be buffalo wings but it is going to have a little bit of the hot sauce and all i ended up doing as you can see they're nowhere near as seasoned as the other wings right nowhere near as seasoned oh wait that's the other jar that one didn't count <laughs> that's not the buffalo wing jar this is okay so there's no way that these are going to be as seasoned as these jars are here so that's fine i literally just rubbed them around to put some flavor of hot sauce on them they're probably going to be very mild and that's fine but what i did do i added in some salt and some pepper and some minced garlic to this jar so these are just going to be plain seasoned wings okay not buffalo wings just plain seasoned wings just because I wanted to have plenty in my canner. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've already wiped the lid and I'm gonna go ahead and get, I've already wiped the rim of the jar. Come on off of there. And I'm gonna go ahead and put on the last lid. And so I'm gonna get these in the canner. So I have four quarts here or three quarts here that are not buffalo wings they're just seasoned wings but at least my canner is going to be full so i'm going to go ahead now and get all of these in the canner okay so now you all i have all of my jars in my pressure canner my pressure canner allows for me to double stack my quarts so now that I have my quartz stacked properly in the canner, I am gonna go ahead now and get my lid on. But before I do, I've already taken just a little bit of olive oil. I've already taken just a little bit of olive oil and I put it on my paper towel here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just oil the rim of my canner inside all the way around. and on the top as well with this all-american pressure canner your lid does not come with a gasket so the lid and the canner when they make contact is literally metal to metal and so you want to make sure that you have your canner oiled so that your canner does not become stuck because it will be almost impossible to get that lid off if it sticks together okay and I even oil a little bit on the inside where my wing nuts are. And then I take my lid and I also go around my lid just on the outside as well. See that? Go around the outside. And I also go right in the middle where my wing nuts are gonna go. I do that here as well. And that just makes sure that my canner is nicely oiled and will not stick, okay? So make sure that you are properly maintaining your canner so that these two things don't stick together. So now I'm gonna, whoops, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get my lid on. And I'm putting these on fingertip tight, kind of like I do my jars, just enough to hold the wing nuts in place. And then I start over with tightening them, okay? So you're tightening them opposite of each other, not side by side, but opposite, okay? So I'm tightening and then I go around, tighten, go around, tighten, and then I start again one more time, tight, making sure it's tight. And one more time, making sure it's tight. All right, now that that's done, I'm turning my fire, turning my fire on high, and I'm gonna allow my canner to come up to pressure. Once it comes up to pressure and starts venting, I'm gonna bring you all back and show you next steps. So y'all stick around. All right, you all, so my canner is now at 11 pounds of pressure, but before I talk about that, I want to talk about the part that I did not record, record, which is the part where pressure started to build up inside of the canner 
And once that happened, my vent pipe here, where this weight is sitting on, my vent pipe started forcing out a steady flow of steam. I allowed that steady flow of steam, it's called venting, I allowed that to go through that process for 10 full minutes. And once it went through that process for 10 minutes, I put my weight on. Now for me, that weight is 10 pounds. This particular weight here has five, 10, and 15 pounds on it, all right? So you have to choose the side that works for you if you have an All-American pressure canner. So for me, that was 10 pounds of pressure. And then I allowed this to come up to pressure. For me, it's 11 pounds of pressure. And of course, you have to reduce the temperature on your stove. Mine here is at 1.5, okay? 1.5, once I put it on 1.5, I know my canner is good for the duration of the processing time. And since I have meat in this canner, of course, the processing time for quartz is 90 minutes, pints is 75 minutes. So this has to complete the processing phase. And then once that's done, my timer is gonna go off and all I'm gonna do is turn the fire off on this canner and that's it. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna bother the knobs here. I'm not gonna bother the weight. I'm not gonna bother this canner at all. It's gonna sit here until that gauge is down to zero. And even after that gauge gets down to zero, I'm gonna let this canner sit here for an additional 30 minutes. And then I'll take off the weight and I'll open, I'll loosen the wing nuts and I'll twist my lid. And I'll give it five minutes just to make sure everything in the canner is still settled. And then I'll take my lid off and remove my jars. So I will bring you back and show you the finished product. All right, you all, the timer has gone off, the canner is done, and it is time to take everything out. It's been a little over an hour, actually about an hour and a half. Mr. H and I have already had our dinner and everything. And so it's time to take the jars out of the canner. Now, I let my canner sit. It's been an hour since this gauge has gone down to zero, okay? So this gauge went down to zero and after then, it's been an additional hour because it takes a while for a canner this size for everything in the canner to start to settle down. Now listen at the, I've already taken this weight from 10 pounds and I flipped it around to five because what that does in my little opinion, it allows the air to escape a little bit slower, right? So listen at this, you hear that? And now everything is out. And I did that about 10 minutes ago because I noticed that if I start to take my weight off and I hear all of the air coming out really fast, my jars inside start responding to that. And what I've noticed is that it causes siphoning for some of my jars. So I take it from 10 pounds, I flip it from 10 to five real quick. So that's on 10. And this is the five, I'll take it and flip it around real quick and put it on five and just leave it for about 10, 15 minutes. And that allows the air to escape a little slower because it's not so much weight on here, right? And then after that, I just take it off and it's little to no air coming out at all. So that's just a little trick that I started doing because I noticed that it helps a lot. So let's go ahead now and get the jars out of the canner, okay? Let's go ahead and take the wing nuts, loosen the wing nuts on the jar, on the canner. Woo! And they're on here pretty good too. I know this thing look like a spaceship, don't it? It look like something from out of somewhere. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna open my canner and now I'm going to lift this lid away from me because you don't want all that steam coming in your face. Okay. All right. No steam facials. <laughs> okay. I'm going to sit this down here on my stove because this is still pretty, pretty, pretty hot. And now I'm going to start taking the jars out of the canner. Let's go ahead and start taking these jars out. These are just my 
lightly seasoned wings right there. But now the rest of these are looking pretty good. Woo. I'll get that one back there. And last but not least, all right, y'all, that is going to do it for the buffalo wings in the jar tonight. I've already done a batch of buffalo wings. Now, the liquid in this jar has to settle down. You have some separation, but once it cools down and start to settle down, they will come together very nicely. Now, just to show you all what the finished product looks like, because right now the liquid is still boiling in the jars, right? So things have to settle first, right? But these are the this is the batch of buffalo wings that I just did yesterday, right? So look at those. You see how it all settles and how it all comes together, right? Yeah. So once the liquid settles and they all come together in the jar, that sauce settles in the jar all over the wings, you all, you have yourself a nice fully flavored jar of buffalo wings. All right, you all. So I hope you enjoy canning buffalo wings with me tonight, today. You all and y'all stay tuned for the teriyaki wings. They're going to be coming up as well. But this, you all, this is one of our favorites right here. So if you like spicy foods, or if you have someone in your family that loves spicy foods and you want to put something away special for them or give something to them especially for them, they would truly enjoy a jar of buffalo wings because, yes, they are spicy. And remember, you all, you can adjust the spice however you see fit, okay? But we love ours with some heat on. All right, y'all? So that is going to do it for this video. If you like the video, like the video. Give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Share the video as well, okay? Please share this video. If you liked it and you want to share it, post it in the comment section below and let me know it's been shared, okay, you all? Thank you so much for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you, and I'm going to see y'all in the next video.